Hi there and welcome to this lecture about the Big Bang and the early years of the Earth. My name is Marcus Henriksen and I'm a history teacher in Sweden. There are three main theories when it comes to the creation of the universe. The Big Bang, that God created the universe, which is the belief in Judaism, Christianity and Islam, or that the universe has always existed and is being recreated in a constant cycle, which is the belief in Hinduism and Buddhism. But let's talk a bit more about the Big Bang. According to science, the Big Bang is supposed to have occurred about 15 billion years ago. Exactly how is still unclear. But when this explosion occurred, it then sent out matter that then would become stars and then the stars would clutter together to form galaxies. But after some million slash billion years, some of these first formed stars would then explode and form what is known as supernovas, about 7 billion years ago. And when these stars exploded, they created new galaxies, such as the Milky Way the galaxy we live in today. And the Earth was created about 4.6 billion years ago. How do we know for sure? Well, scientists use a method known as radiometric timing. They measure the radioactive isotopes in the mountains in substance such as uranium or potassium. Then they use something known or called the half-life span. That is how many of the atoms that have disappeared in these matters over time. The more that have disappeared, the older the matter is. When we today try to date stuff like old ships and weapons, etc., most historians or archaeologists instead use the C14 method. They measure the radioactivity of carbon, and it's much safer but only up to 75,000 years. But when the Earth was first created, it was a glowing globe. But the metals then formed a nucleus. The Earth's crust came into being about 3.9 billion years ago. But even though that Earth got a crust, there were still large amount of volcanic activity during this time. So how did we get water? Well, according to science, gases from the Earth's interior rose to the surface. But we also got some meteorite bombardment. And most meteorites didn't consist of stone and rock and metal, but of ice. So when these ice meteorites hit Earth, they then melted and formed water. But we didn't have an atmosphere here on Earth. First we got a noxious atmosphere that was based mostly of the matter hydrogen and helium, but eventually it was all blown away. Then came water vapor, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, nitrogen, and methane, but these also disappeared over time. In the end, the atmosphere that we have today was formed, which mostly consists of nitrogen and oxygen. 
But you should know that the climate here on Earth for a very long time was very unstable. Sometimes it got warmer, sometimes it got colder. About 2.4 billion years ago, the Earth became basically a giant snowball. But after 200 million years, it melted uh, and the Earth didn't become a snowball. How you might ask? Well, at first scientists believed that volcanic activity contributed to this fact, but now they lean more towards asteroids and meteorites. But how was the first life on Earth created? Well, if you are a believer in Christianity, you probably would answer with God. And this also applies for Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, and so on. But if you ask scientists, they would probably give you a different answer. They believe that the first life on Earth arose with the help of other substances from outer space, which came to Earth with the help of asteroids and meteorites. Scientists have found substances such as amino acids, ribose in asteroids and so on, which are all building blocks for RNA, the precursor or predecessor to DNA. And then simple life was created. First, we have the stromatolites, which is basically a cyanobacteria, single cell organism, about 3 billion years ago, during what is also known by historian, historians and archaeologists as the Precambrian period. Then, as time goes by, mutations occurred, which in turn allowed new species to arise and evolve. About 600 million years ago, we have the beginning of the prehistoric times. During this time, the oxygen level on Earth increased rapidly. Animals could now, for the first time, have a skeleton. Fish then developed legs and made it onto land. They became the first lizards that later would became or become dinosaurs. The word dinosaur basically means large lizard. Are there any evidence for this? Well, fossils from these animals are still found all over the world today. But during this time, all the Earth's continents didn't look like they do today. Instead, we have Pangaea, which basically are all continents together. Two hundred thirty million years ago, we have the Triassic period. We can now see animals like the alligator, crocodile, and so on. Two hundred million years ago, Pangaea split apart, and the beginning of the continents as we know today started. Why? Well, very large volcanic eruptions. The dinosaurs then ruled Earth for about 130 million years, mostly during the Cretaceous period and the Jurassic period. But then suddenly they died out. Why? Some scientists believe that it was climate change. Too hot maybe, too cold maybe, too little oxygen. Some believe in a virus, 
But the most famous theory, and that most scientists believe, is that the Earth was hit by a large asteroid about 66 million years ago, with the force of 21 billion Hiroshima bombs, which in turn ejected 25 trillion tons of rock into the atmosphere. When this asteroid hit off in Mexico, a giant tidal wave was created, about 1,500 meters high. The impact also impacted the bedrock, which in turn created glass balls that were then hurled both on Earth and into space, and you can still find them today. The asteroid weighted about 2,500 billion tons. It created an explosion and a dust cloud, which in turn led to a new ice age. Only 2% of the original solar energy now got through to the animals and plants. And according to most scientists, it killed about 75% of all the species on Earth. But some survived, like the birds. Also crocodiles, turtles, some fish, insects, smaller animals, and so on. But all the major and big animals and dinosaurs, well, they couldn't make it. The sources I have used for this lecture are a newspaper here in Sweden known as Illustrated Science. I have also looked at some documentaries like these ones and Wikipedia Big Bang and so on and uh, some of my previous lectures. But if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I hope that you have a great day. Bye!